Kelly, he who brought up Boykin and uh, where he was in relation to the other players he's competing with, and he said he's really separated himself from the standpoint that uh, you know he he can force people uh, out of stacking the box and, and uh, uh, you know force extra help on him. What have you seen from him, especially as it relates to uh, you know the progress he's made since his big play in the Citrus Bowl? Um, I think that he's using his talents daily. I think that with every rep, he's using his quickness, he's using his size and length, uh, he's showing his explosiveness. Um, and I think that comes from his conditioning and his experience in the offense. So Kelly seems a lot stronger than he was. I know you haven't been here for his entire career, but have you seen that? I have. It starts in the weight room. I know those numbers are different this year, this spring, than they were last spring. Uh, and then he's also applying those numbers. So he's stronger in the bench press, and he's stronger at the line of scrimmage, pushing guys off uh, and creating separation. Very bright kid, too. Yes, very. Coach Michael Young came on late in the year and really helped you guys in the bowl game. He, he also seemed like he threatened for playing time early. What, what happens to a young guy like him that has that much talent that it, it takes a while for him to kind of crack into the rotation? It's tough. You know, you had some guys that were ahead of him. You know, that experience is what you try to use going into a season. Uh, he showed his talents, you know, early in camp. Um, sometimes it's hard to sustain um, the drive and the grit that, uh, to get to the end of the season. Uh, he was able to kind of self-evaluate, uh, take a good look in the mirror and say, you know what, I have more. You know, I'm capable of doing this. And he was able in the second half of the season to push again and to find opportunities. Talking to him after the Citrus Bowl, his, he kind of explained his touchdown like you would think a junior or senior would. How he does he have a natural football instinct up there? He does. He does. He's out doing great things for us uh, here in spring ball, and uh, he he has corrected himself on a number of things, you know. And he takes the coaching. Um, you know, I think when he first came in, though, he thought it was you know it, it's not about me in a selfish way, but I have to control me. And he wasn't as open to coaching. He didn't see things as clearly. Uh, and as time went on and as he became more and more eager to play, he started to listen a little more, and that helped him see a little bit more. And that kind of freed his game up where he was able to make more plays. He seemed like they might be fairly quick, too, when we watched the one-on-one uh, -on -one drills. Absolutely. He's showing his quickness, and he's definitely got deep speed. What's the next step? I know Chase Claypool's not fully cleared for full contact, but. What's the next step for him in, in his development? How does he take his game to the next level? Chase? Yeah. Uh, Chase, similar to Miles and all receivers, it's about the daily commitment to the fundamentals. Um, there is, you know, there's a little separation there that we talk about. You know, if I were to go to Canada and try to line up and play football there, I wouldn't know what going in motion means. I wouldn't know how wide the field is, how long, hey, why is this up right here in the middle of the end zone? So we're trying to work through some of the barriers. And, and, and before we get to that, we're just talking about, you know, one day at a time and the fundamentals and the quick feet uh, and using the techniques that we're teaching and, and adjusting to what you're seeing in front of you. I mean, if he puts it all together and is totally focused, I mean, how high is his ceiling? It's through the roof. It's uh, it's unlimited, and, and it's my job daily. Uh, I've mentioned it before, you know, that, that Chase, uh, you know, is, is an angry and physical blocker. He's an emotional player, and so we have to kind of channel that emotion into, hey, take this right step here. And he's like, you know, I just want to make the big play. Uh, but even with his size, speed, and strength, it is difficult for him to free himself up if you're playing against an All-American cornerback. Uh, if you're playing against a guy that's been playing for four years and really understands where you're aligned and anticipating what you're doing. So we really need to focus on Chase and his football IQ uh, so that he could use his talents. Where have you seen the biggest strides just in your room in general since last season or even since, uh, since you first got here? Um, our focus is different, you know. I, I think uh, after last year and, and what we were able to do on offense and what we were not able to do, our focus is, is, is helping in the passing game and being more explosive and, and so on, showing a dimension in the offense that we haven't used yet uh, quarter by quarter. Um, so there's a focus and determination to, to be playmakers, be fast, uh, and take advantage of secondaries. What has uh, Javon McKinley's uh, progress been like so far? It's been good. Uh, you know, I've got a, a one group and a two group. That could be probably four to five guys in each group. So the fourth guy can probably roll in at, at either, you know, a couple of spots. Uh, he's in that. He's in, in both groups, you know, so he can roll in with the first or the second group. Uh, his progress has been good. He's made some plays. You know, it's been some opportunities that he's missed. Um, but like most guys, you know, I think he's got a different determination because he's going into year three. 
and he wants that opportunity for his family to see him play. What has his like his attitude and his patience been like? I guess when you're when you're sitting out a season last year and you're kind of just absorbing everything. Just what has his attitude been like? Sort of fighting. Right. Fighting right. That? It's tough. It's tough when you go down the scout team. It's tough to 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 keep the level of competition in your mind. Okay, I've got to go out and compete against the first team defense. Um, and I don't get a chance to see that. You may get some reps with me. I may pull him and, and watch him work a little bit, but a majority of his time is spent away from me. Uh, so we just have to share information off the field a little bit more. You know, we have to talk about little things that he might be doing. We may have to steal opportunities watching video together and say, hey, you got to do this when you're over there with the defense. You know, I know they may not want you to attack the ball and injure someone, but you can go full speed, you know. So we're just trying to work on the habits daily, even though he's over there. And I, I think he tried to do that, so his transition shouldn't be very difficult to come back over. Who's the potential guy there that you have to maybe in the stash? I'm not saying anybody like a Will Four, but if, where's uh, somebody like a Michael Young that sudden explosion that he has as maybe that vertical threat? Right. Well, I, th I think right now in terms of speed, what you're seeing is you're seeing we're seeing uh, we're seeing Michael Young play fast. We're seeing uh, Chris Fink play fast. I know you mentioned Phil Fuller, so you're thinking about a guy that's just a dynamic runner and a speed guy. Uh, those guys are probably our fast guys, but in some of the drills that we do, you see our bigger guys, and, and they have speed. You know, you, it just depends on the space and the ten yard area. You know, you may have uh, Chase or Miles be just as quick as you open it up. Sometimes the bigger guys fall behind, but uh, I think that all of those guys are playing with speed right now. They're very confident. Uh, they know what they're doing. Uh, I'm not saying that we're, you know, ready to play today, but at the same time, I do like where our mindset is. How's Jafar handled the dual role at this point, and, and has it slowed him down at all? Uh, it has slowed him down, but it ha he has not made mistakes. Uh, that's one of the things after, I think this is practice six, but in the meeting today we talked about after five practices and the mistakes, um, I tallied those and, and Jafar may have had one mistake over five practices. Um, so that's a great sign. That's a great sign that he is studying and learning. I looked at uh, the, the, the sheets to see how much he's doing on his own with his iPad and he is doing that more than anyone. Uh, so that's a sign of, of what we see on the field, but he's just got to do it faster. He's got to feel comfortable. Uh, a guy that's built with speed and power can be great in both areas. Uh, he knows what to do. His reaction time is a little bit slower right now, so we're in a great place with him. Coach, where does Freddie Canteen fit the picture? Freddie's another speed guy. Freddie's playing fast. Uh, he's coming off of an injury. Uh, but at the same time, he knows what to do. Freddie also is a guy that had limited mistakes when you count him over the last couple of practices or five practices. Uh, so he knows what to do. It's just a matter of where he is and how he uses his strength and the strength to keep separation. You know, DBs hold. You know, they hold across the country. And so Freddie's got to, we got to do something to use, you know, our hands and our arms to create separation. And there's some, some hesitation there because he's still recovering. You have an impressive group of freshmen that will be coming in in June. Do you use those guys to motivate the guys you have in the room now to say, hey, you guys need to establish yourself because you got some talent on the way? Yeah, there's a, there's a saying in, in my room. They may not like it, but, uh, but, but everyone in that room will be replaced one day, right? And they decide how soon. Same with me, right? Every one of us will be replaced. So uh, they see the, the tags on the board. They know they're there. They're in a the bright color. They're on the board. So. They know they're there, but at the same time, they're not concerned with those guys because they know when they walk in the door, they know absolutely nothing. What excites you the most about those guys that will get here in the summer? Um, you know, it's like clay. I get to mold it. Yeah, I get to shape it and mold it, and I know that those guys from our conversations here in the spring, um, they're eager. They have iPads. They have the information. I'm getting questions back from them. Um, you know, they're confident. You know, they're confident right now, and they haven't taken a snap. Jumping back to uh, Chris Fink, what, what assets does he bring to the field? Um, I think Chris, uh, Chris was, had the least amount of MAs. Uh, and, and so at this point in the game, you know, Fink knows everything. I think I can move Fink anywhere. I can beat Fink up. I can get him in front of blockers. We're doing so many little things with Fink uh, that, that help him have a knack for the game outside of the playbook. 
And that's, that's, that's his spring because he understands exactly what we want. He knows the playbook. Uh, but at the same time, we're talking about leverage. We're talking about using his height to his advantage, using his quickness, timing on breaks, and anticipation of people around him. Um, so with Fink, you know, we're doing some things that help you, you know, uh, play for a long time. And speaking of freshmen, you do have one here in Micah Jones. Yes. Uh, we didn't see him in the mix a lot with the, the team stuff the other day. The learning curve is pretty steep for him. Very. Very. It's going some, when you come in as a freshman and you have the numbers uh, in your favor as far as a group, we probably going 100 miles an hour. Right now it's going 1,000 miles an hour for Micah. Uh, so he's at a disadvantage coming in in the spring. His advantage won't show up until we get to fall camp. Um, so for him, we're not going to slow down because we have a veteran group. So he's chasing his tail, you know, and trying to chase everybody out in front of him. So there's a little bit of protecting him and his confidence. Uh, it's calculated when he goes. Um, he's able to show what he can do in a limited setting, you know, some of the one-on-ones, uh, some of the seven-on-seven. Seven. Uh, but when we're going fast, uh, I try to protect him so that he doesn't get frustrated. It's frustrating enough as it is. Anything else? All right. Thank you, Coach. Okay.